Okay, we're at 17.8 electrical activity in the heart. Uh, this is, to me, this is more biology, but they do have it in a physics book. So uh, we are talking about electrical uh, signals. So the, the heart, um, all activity is, it involves electrical uh, pulses. Uh, the, the, the way the, the uh, nerves uh, communicate is uh, with pulses, with electrical pulses. Um, the uh, brain activity is, can be measured with what they call little squids, uh, EKGs. They use little, you know, how many of you have had an EKG? They tape little uh, sensors to your chest. And uh, I've, I've had several of them um, for good reason. Uh, but the, uh, so there's a lot of electric, electrical activity that's taking place in your body. Um, and so we're going to discuss that with the, uh, uh, the figures. I don't, I can't profess to knowing this section very well, but, uh, this is a, uh, a figure of a EKG and, and from about, oops, from about, uh, this, this area here to about here, this like a one cycle of an EKG. And it's um, the, the sinoatrial uh, node is what uh, uh, what starts it. There's a, a depolarization wavefront. You can see that there's like positive on the outside, negative on the inside. The depolarization wavefront uh, kind of uh, neutralizes that, and then it 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 reestablishes itself itself before the the next pulse. You're, you're welcome to read this section. It's on page 582 uh, to 583. I'm not going to go into it in detail, um, mainly because I don't understand it very well, but that's okay. Uh, and so here's it. If you look up here, you can see the. this is a, a reading. This is a schematic of the pulses. There's the, the, the P pulse. The I guess that's like... Uh, um, Maybe that stands for primary or something like that, uh, or maybe it's just in alphabetical order. P Q R S T. Uh, you know, you have the P pulse that kind of starts everything off, and then the Q R S. What do they you see? Uh, the Q R S pulse occurs in the ventricles just before they contract, and the T pulse occurs when the cells in the ventricles begin to recover. So that's a normal uh, EKG cycle. Um, and then they, they show you, uh, some, uh, if you look at the QRS pulse in this A, the QRS, QRS pulse is, if too wide, it's possibly a, from an enlarged heart. Uh, the time between, uh, in B, it says the time between the P pulse and the QRS pulse changes. Possible blockage in the conduction path between the SA and AV nodes. And then um, uh, in C, it says no P pulse in an irregular period for the QRS pulse indicates irregular atrial and ventricular contractions, fibrillation. Uh, so these are, these are things that they, they look at to determine the state of your heart. Um, and this is a, uh, uh, they don't have this in the, in the book, I believe. Uh, this is probably some sort of, uh, St. Jude Medical is probably some sort of, uh, pacemaker. Oops. Let's, um, get the right, the right page and see, um, I still have a ways to go. All right, here we go. Here we go. That is, um, yeah, this is the cardiac pacemaker. Um, the, uh, that's one of the, uh, the ways my dad wore a, a pacemaker for, for years, uh, and, uh, never really had much problem with it. And it didn't, it, it didn't turn on very often, but, um, and this is, this is another kind of, uh, uh, device a dual chamber ICD 
and uh, the what is the they say with the ICD? It's a implanted cardio cardioverter defibrillator, um, and so that's the uh, it resides on the chest, and the little probe goes into your heart, and it uh, it as it says an emergency room in your chest. This was. Uh, in June 2001, it, it was uh, inserted into Vice President Dick Cheney at the time, um, and it has several functions, monitoring, storing signals, uh, the, let's see, it, it, monitoring both atrial and uh, ventricular chambers to differentiate between atrial and potentially uh, fatal ventricular arrhythmias, uh, which require prompt regulation. Uh, storing signals says storing about a half hour of heart signals can easily be read out by a physician. Uh, it says easy to be to reprogram, being easily reprogrammed with an external magnetic wand uh, for signal anal analysis and comparison. And detail says performing complicated signal analysis and comparison. That same thing. Uh, supplying pacing signals or a high voltage pulse. Uh, it says supplying 0.25 to 10 volt repetitive pacing signal to speed up or slow down a malfunctioning heart or a high voltage pulse of about 800 volts uh, to halt the potentially fatal condition of ventricular fibrillation, fibrillation in which the heart quivers rapidly rather than beats. Um, people who have experienced such a high voltage jolt say that it feels like a kick or a bomb going off in the chest. 800 volts, I could imagine so. And then the last, automatically adjusting the number of pacing pulses per minute. Um, and it reads the same thing uh, in, in the book. And these are the, um, it says they're powered by lithium batteries and they are up to four to six years. And these are some of the properties of implanted ICDs. It weighs 85 grams. Uh, that 30, you estimate about 30 grams per ounce. It's about three ounces. Uh, centimeters, it says about five stacks of dollars. Uh, anti -tach tachycardia pacing, it delivers a burst of critically timed low energy pulses, number of bursts, burst cycle. You can read that high voltage defibrillation, um, pulse energy 37 stored, 33 delivered, pulse amplitude 801 volts. That's the one that feels like a kick um, and then by bradycardia uh, pacing a dual chamber ICD can steadily deliver repetitive pulses to both the atrium and the ventricle um, so there's the there's the information I didn't cover it very well uh, I don't know that everybody's interested in certainly if you're going in the medical field you might be interested in this and and read it in detail I, I don't think I'll ask any quiz question or homework questions on it. It's just for information. All right, and that brings us to the end of chapter 17. Uh, so we'll stop it here.